Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, a free site, bettingangle.us, a free site. Today is Monday, October 18th, 2021. Let's talk boxing, but first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, this fight had, excuse me, this weekend had some upsets that could have put you in the penthouse. Sadly for me, I was on the sidelines for most of the action. Let's talk about a huge upset, in fact, a couple of them. I have to start with the Jonathan Gonzalez win over Elwin Soto. Now, Gonzalez is a master boxer, a master boxer. He was going off, believe it or not, at a plus 500. I didn't bet the fight because in researching the fight, I noticed a Gonzalez fight against a fighter named Tanaka, who is excellent in going to the body, right? Can literally just drop a shoulder and throw body shots, right? Even though he was much taller than Jonathan Gonzalez. I noticed that Gonzalez in that fight gets stopped off body shots. I thought, you know what? Elwin Soto is a pretty good body puncher. I was hesitant. Profits only go to the courageous, right? I did not make the bet. And then, of course, I saw Jonathan Gonzalez deconstruct Soto, right? There's one judge out there who had Soto winning the fight by four rounds. I have no idea what fight he was watching. Gonzalez clearly won the fight by at least three rounds. I believe the two other judges had him winning by four rounds apiece. But what made that fight interesting was the fact that while Elwin Soto can muscle you over to the ropes, he's predictable in throwing body shots, right? So Gonzalez was able to bend also Elwin Soto, and this is a dynamic I did not expect, who's about the same height as Jonathan Gonzalez and who didn't really know how to hide his hands, was not only obvious going to the body, but Gonzalez was able to bend to take his body out of the frame. And so that fight is interesting because once you take Soto's body shots away from him, Soto's not the same fighter. Let me also point out too, and I was surprised by this, when the guys were in the pocket and Soto would throw a big punch, Soto's defense were his legs. In other words, he wouldn't stay in the pocket thinking, I hit harder than Gonzalez. Rather, he would move away from Gonzalez. And when you do that against a master boxer, that gives the master boxer an opportunity to move away from the corner, right? To change position, to change the angles. So uh, that fight is noteworthy if you want to see an excellent, excellent uh, display of boxing against a front foot heavy opponent, right? If you want to see a guy who doesn't hit as hard as his opponent, take the opponent's title. Because let's remember, Gonzalez here was the challenger. Then that Gonzalez Soto fight is really the fight to watch. That's a masterful performance. I feel foolish when the odds are as high as a plus 500 and you know the guy is a master boxer. That bet should make itself. In other words, you're going to lose some of these. I'm not saying you're always going to win. But I knew Gonzalez was world class. The minute they got above a plus 300, I should have thought to myself, come on, man. <laughs> you know <laughs> There's no way that Soto was going to beat Gonzalez five times out of six. Simply no way. I should have taken that bet. I didn't. I was on the sidelines. The title changed hands. Masterful performance by Jonathan Gonzalez. It also makes you reevaluate Tanaka because Tanaka gets to Gonzalez's body several times in their fight. Obviously, Tanaka is a different level of body puncher than Elwin Soto. 
Let's talk about Mikey Garcia against Sandor Martin. Let me just first say, if you're thinking about this fight, right, a guy in the pocket who's complete, that's who Mikey Garcia is, right? Garcia is clearly a future Hall of Famer, right? I believe so much in Mikey in the pocket that I took him against Errol Spence, who was unbeaten at the time, right? Hell, Spence is unbeaten now. I lost on that fight. Understand, Garcia is two-handed, excellent left hook, excellent straight right hand. Uh, he's dealt with taller, rangy fighters before, very aggressive against Robert Easter, right? Mikey Garcia is, to me, the full package, but there seems to be a path to victory against him if you're elite. We saw Errol Spence, at that time a short-range hooker, right? Take apart Mikey Garcia on his back foot behind a jab. Suddenly you noticed, early in that fight, that Mikey just did not have the reach that Errol Spence had. You also noticed, too, that Spence was countering Mikey. In other words, Spence would wait for Mikey to throw punches before Spence would punch back. Now here we had him against a slick lefty who wasn't as tall as Errol Spence, but who was taller, who fights taller than Mikey Garcia. Right? And this lefty was an excellent counterpuncher. He has excellent rhythm. His timing is impeccable. Now there's a heavyweight title fight coming up that to me might be the heavyweight version of Mikey Garcia versus Sander Martin. It's a heavyweight fight where the underdog right now, you're getting a plus 200. And I believe he's the value side of the play, right? The guy who's in the pocket, the righty who is complete in the pocket, I'll give Dylan White that, is Dylan White. The guy he's fighting next, the mover, who's a southpaw, who fights from the outside in, like Sander Martin does, who has timing and who's a pretty good counterpuncher, is Otto Wallen, right? Understand, you have the same possible dynamic that you have in this fight. Valen moves a lot better, in my opinion, than Dylan White. Just like Sander Martin, I believe the secret to this fight is Sander Martin figures out the angle on Mikey Garcia's jab in the first two rounds. Then he shows you who he really is. You notice there's a pep in his step. You notice that he moved a lot better than Mikey Garcia. Also, let me say this. To fight a heavy-handed guy like Mikey Garcia and to decide that you're going to rely on counter punches is simply breathtaking. Right? Victory goes to the courageous. Sander Martin is incredibly courageous this fight. Let me also say too that as the fight progresses, you notice that Martin learns the timing even more. So by the time you get to the sixth round, Martin is able to land straight lefts with regularity. In other words, he has figured out Mikey Garcia's timing to the point where he can literally just block Mikey's shot, come back with a straight left or a one-two where the payoff punch is the straight left. And he was hitting Mikey flush. Let me say this too. Martin, a mover, and you'll see this pattern repeat itself in boxing. Right? When you're a born mover, and by that I mean a guy who his entire career has emphasized moving, 
right? Bouncing on his legs, bouncing on the balls of his feet, um, determining where the guys are in the ring, right? Moving around the ring, moving more than his opponent, not relying on a pocket being set up to be successful, right? When you're a mover who has cultivated that skill for years, and understand there's also an age dynamic in this fight. Sanders younger than Mikey, right? Mikey's 33. Sander is 27. Six years in boxing, that's a long time, especially when you're dealing with a guy at 144, right, who is 33 years old, right? Heavyweights, in my opinion, age more slowly than welterweights. So you noticed by round three and four, that Martin was able to move wherever he wanted. You also noticed that he was a vet, right? Look at the number of fights, folks. He's had a lot of fights. He's had a lot of wins, right? His record now after this victory mirrors Mike, Mikey Garcia's, right? Not the quality of opposition, not the titles, Mikey Garcia, of course, has titles in multiple weight classes. But let's just say Sander Martin has been successful in his style. His style has resulted in wins. So you'll notice, and this is breathtaking stuff, Mikey Garcia, who has dropped countless guys, uh, Declan, over by the side of the ropes, Get Sander Martin over by the ropes in multiple rounds, right? Look at round five, folks. And you'll notice that Martin is comfortable up on the ropes. What I can't figure out is how Martin would always be able to escape to Mikey Garcia's left. You know, here he is against a major slugger. This is almost like being up on the ropes against Mike Tyson. Right, here's Mikey Garcia, gets him up over by the ropes, which is exactly where Mikey Garcia wants him. Right, let's not kid ourselves. Mikey Garcia is making the effort. He gets Sander Martin over by the ropes repeatedly. And you notice Martin not only is able to slide to his right, right, and he's a lefty. He's not only able to slide to his right to get out of harm's way, but while he's over by the ropes, you wonder who has trapped who. Right? You get the feeling Mikey thinks, okay, now's the time where I get to land big shots. But folks, he's in with a counterpuncher. So you get the feeling that Sander Martin is thinking, okay, he's going to throw big shots. If I block the shot, then I'm going to have an opportunity at a counter. He's going to be open. Folks, I'm just telling you Sander Martin's boxing skills are that good. Let's also not get confused about the last third of the fight. I know people are saying, hey, there wasn't an urgency in Mikey Garcia's corner. Folks, I saw Mikey getting hit with a lot of straight left hands. Right? I believe that Mikey is trying to figure things out. Why isn't Mikey just jumping into the pocket at that point? It's because when he tries to, he's getting countered hard up top with hard shots. Right? So... This fight has a progression to it, right? Early, you notice that they're just pawing at each other with the jab. Well, Sander Martin takes away Mikey's jab. Then you notice Sander Martin has a mobile jab. In other words, as he moves, he can actually throw a jab, right? His jab's not completely taken away. But I don't believe the jab is Sander Martin's game. Sergio Mora says it on the telecast. He's a crisp puncher. Right? I believe his real game is to counterpunch and to land clean counterpunches 
and then to move away to where he wants to go. Then as Mikey comes over to him, right, this southpaw is able to land some more shots and then scamper away. Right, so you have a fight where I believe for the last third of the fight, it's not that Mikey's complacent. It's not that Mikey's convinced he's won the fight. I know that's what he said after the fight, but I don't buy it. I believe that Mikey realizes that this guy was hitting him cleaner than most of his opponents. Let me also say, too, Mikey had just fought uh, Jesse Vargas, right? And Vargas is a guy who comes after you, right? You don't really have to go looking for Jesse Vargas. Jesse Vargas is going to let you know he's in the ring. Jesse Vargas is convinced in his power. Jesse Vargas is a guy who believes in his volume. Right now, what I want people to consider are the fight styles of opponents when a fighter isn't fighting that often. Now, that Jesse Vargas fight was last year. We're in October of 2021. Mikey hasn't been in the ring for a while. The Vargas fight didn't prepare Mark, uh, Mikey for this fight because, of course, Vargas is right-handed. Mikey here is fighting a southpaw. Vargas, he's looking for you, right? Um, you know, there's going to be exchanges. There's going to be a defined pocket. Here you have a mover, right? A guy, you know, think... Tyson Fury in the first Wilder fight or Tyson Fury in the Klitschko fight, right? Think Ali, most of his career before he decides to take punches and rope-a-dope and stuff like that, right? Here you have a mover. So while Sander Martin is relatively stationary the first two rounds, once he starts moving, Mikey's unprepared for this. I believe when Mikey goes over to the corner, he thinks he has his opponent trapped. He doesn't realize that the trap is actually for him. Now, I've watched Mikey Garcia a long time. I haven't seen Mikey getting caught as flush and as often as he was the last three rounds of this fight. Take a look at the last round of the fight. Right, you're going to notice that in the last round, we can debate Mikey's aggressiveness. You can't debate, <laughs> you just can't debate Sander Martin's aggressiveness, right? The guy during exchanges isn't trying to survive. He's actually trying to land shots, right? So if I'm Mikey Garcia, and I know on the telecast, they talked about the possibility of a rematch. If I'm Mikey Garcia, I might not want to rematch with this guy. Right? Before I fight this guy again, I might need to fight a southpaw who doesn't have the legs of this guy. Right? Or who has the legs of this guy, but doesn't have the timing of this guy. Right? Because, folks... As I, you know, this really is a tale of three fights. The first two rounds, they're pulling at each other. They're knocking each other's jab down, right? Both guys realize that, hey, in the pocket, I'm not going to be able to land my jab. Then you get to the middle of the fight where suddenly here is Sander Martin, right? The first couple of rounds, he's flat-footed, basically. After that, oh, here are the legs, right? Oh, he's moving around the ring. Then as Mikey tries to catch up with him, pop, 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 his jab starts landing because, again, it's a mobile jab. Then Mikey gets him over by the ropes. Then you see the last third of the fight. The timing improve. Right? Sander Martin, that straight left, he's landing it up top on Mikey. He's also throwing it to Mikey's body. Right? He's throwing enough quality punches 
where you understand he's not running away from Mikey. He's timing Mikey. Let me just say, if you're concerned about the Otto Wallen Dylan White fight, that's the concern you need to have. The idea that Otto Wallen moves too well for Dylan White is a southpaw where White's going to be unfamiliar with the angles and will have his great jab taken away like Mikey had his jab taken away. Right? That Dylan White is going to have to get outside his comfort zone, move his feet a little bit more than he wants to to try to pin a mover. And when he starts to move faster than he's comfortable with, he might find himself getting countered. Like Sander Martin countered Mikey Garcia. Right? Excellent fight by Sander Martin. I, uh, I congratulate him. I'm excited about this fight. Because the welterweight division is loaded. Manny Pacquiao has retired. You have a lot of guys with big names who have not been fighting. Right? Keith Thurman comes to mind. Right? Obviously, Errol Spence right now is tending to his health. You have Virgil Ortiz in the division. I just wonder what happens if a guy fights Sander Martin and he's not prepared for a slick moving southpaw with great timing. Let's just say Sander Martin right now deserves your attention at 147. Understand too, both of these guys came in weighing 144 and less. There is a question of weight, right? Because some of the guys at 147 are a little heavier, right? You wonder, since Mikey's success has been at lower weights, how exactly would either guy do against the Keith Thurman? Right? A heavy puncher at 147. Right? Food for thought. Excellent win by Sander Martin. I applaud him. I think uh, Mikey Garcia realizes that he was getting countered. And so I believe that sharp counterpunching had a lot to do with Mikey not being more aggressive in those last three rounds. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by.